Hi, my name is Kathy Moyne and we're here at Green Thumb Nursery today to talk about Cymbidium orchids. So I have been very neglectful of my orchids. Um, they kind of sat in the corner somewhere and they've stretched and this and that and they're in a lot of help. They need a lot of help. So I have brought in the expert. This is Jerry Wang, one of our landscape designers and he is also our, one of our gurus here. And oh, he is... <laughs> He is going to show us how to take care of these these cymbidiums that I have neglected. These are in need of help, so I'm gonna I'm gonna re refer to Jerry for his um, his information, and we're gonna go from there. So Jerry, mm -hmm. take it away. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm Jerry. Okay, here is the cymbidium. As you can see, it's quite root bound. Okay, at least a few years in the pot. Many, yeah, many yeah. years in the many pot. Many years. So, uh, there are two ways of doing this. Okay, you can you can either leave leave this whole plant as one clump, and then uh, uh, just transplant into a bigger pot, or you can set, split it, separate okay. it. Okay, right. into smaller clumps. Okay, so depending on the kind of look you want, in transplanting this whole entire clump into a bigger pot, you'll have much bigger and better show of right. flowers. Have a giant spray of flowers. Which say. is Versus, why uh, we're going to put it in here. Yes. Okay, here, let's try to get this out of the pot, okay? First of all, be careful. You might want to wear uh, your uh, gloves because these things are very, very sharp. Okay? So very, be very careful with these uh, base of the leaves, okay? So let's see what we can do. So usually I just press on the pot a few times. Don't worry about breaking the pot, it's plastic. It's going in the trash anyway. Yeah. <laughs> the pot. So, whoops, all oh, came out right away. <laughs> all Good. right, there we go. Uh -huh. so, uh, if you want to reuse this pot, gotta wash it, okay, before you put another orchid in it. Uh, with bleach water? Yeah, just bleach a bit water. of a weak bleach solution. There you mm -hmm. go. Yeah, rinse it clean, brush it clean. That should go with all orchid tools, orchid pots, make sure they're all very clean, very disinfected. Okay. So now, like doctor, he's like a doctor. Yeah. See a lot of these roots. If you look closely, a lot of these roots are rotten. All these rotten roots have to go. Okay. See? All these old bark cannot be reused. You can throw this bark on top of your rose bushes, but okay. don't use it for other orchids. Okay. Um, because it's pretty bad. Well, it holds diseases. Yeah, it holds diseases and spores, then spores. Yeah, things like that. They so, can spread, so you don't want to use. Yeah. Yeah, don't use old bark. Yeah. Um, and we're today we're going to be using uh, the EB stone. I prefer the uh, larger size orchid pot. This is the medium size. Okay, they make different sizes. I like medium size bark because um, it holds more air. Orchid mix. Uh, orchid mixes and finer orchid bark, those are for um, terrestrial orchids, okay, ground dwelling orchids. This is a ground dwelling orchid, okay, cymidium, but uh, I think they enjoy a little extra air space, air, air yeah. pockets in their root system since right. their roots are so big, right. okay. And they're extremely pro to rot. And and tight, we want, we want them tight because yeah. them being tight makes them bloom a little bit better. Right. And then you have to spend some time this plant pulling really off the old. dead stuff. And inside these, there's some hard stems. These are called pseudobulbs. Pseudobulbs, uh, that's okay. Fake bulbs, okay. Uh, orchids use pseudobulbs to um, store nutrients, okay. So you have to really go in here and clean them. So occasionally, you see some of these bulbs are quite hollow. Like this rotten. one. Yeah, so you gotta take them out. Get them out. While you're cleaning, watch out for this one has some. Watch out for scale. Oh, this one's all hollow. Uh-huh. Tiny little white dots or white bumps. Those are scale insects. Uh cymidiums are extremely prone to scale. Okay. Okay. So you gotta clean this up. It's gonna and, take a while. And you can use an oil spray, the all season oil, to kill the um, scale as well yeah just get rid of all the hollow bulbs 
Yeah, and kind of be rough about it. Yes, it's amazing how rough we can be with these plants and they're still okay with that. It's like you need some muscle too. Yeah, I know. That's why I'm letting him do it. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. uh, all right, here comes the here comes the pruner. Yeah. Okay, so now what are you do? What are you doing here, Jerry? I'm splitting the plant. For people who like to split their orchids, make sure the clumps, each clump that you split out, are not too small. Okay. Okay. So what's it, is there a rule of thumb? Yeah, three to five. Three to five of the little bulb of suitable these uh, suitable bulbs per clump. Per clump. The these hard suitable bulbs, the suitable bulbs are still alive. Like you can tell, this is still alive. Right. You can actually root this. Okay. You can stick that in some um, soil mix, uh, orchid mix, and it will make another sprout. Now, would you use mix on that one because it's younger? Okay. Yeah, I will use mix. You just have to water more carefully. Okay. okay. Good thing about soil mi uh, orchid mixes, or um, see, there's actually a flower. It's a it's a node. Oh, okay. If you look very closely. There's actually a bud right there, sleeping bud, and it will sprout from there. Okay, and then. Uh, um, they, if you want to make, if you, let's say you like this variety a lot and mm -hmm. you want to make a ton of them. Okay. So don't throw away these bulbs. Okay. Okay. All right. So we will keep that one. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's really no. repetitive. <laughs> yes. So, so when do these normally flower, Jerry? They usually flower. It's called, they, they initiate the flowers in the fall. Okay. When weather starts getting cool. Okay. As the, As the cool, days get shorter. Yeah, this is uh, not a tropical orchid. Okay. Okay. It requires some winter chill. Okay, so it needs so, some chill. Uh huh. The, you, the the flower buds start showing from the base of the plant usually around like December, January. Okay. And they bloom in the springtime. Okay. That's so it's usually it takes the a case while. for Southern California. Okay. Okay. So it takes a while. Yeah, I've got to be really careful with these leaves. They're very, very sharp. Don't cut yourself. Jerry. Yeah, I know, I know. See all these roots have you can you can feel. See, this is a. Oh yeah, summer summer. See, you can you rotten. see you pull it right off. See, yeah, the, the rotten. Rot, that's a rotten root, of course. Yeah, so you kind of have to be mean and just go through the whole thing. Cut them all off. Uh, it's okay to cut some healthy roots off because the plant will make a new set of roots. Okay. Okay, so it is, I mean, he's being brutal with this plant. Yes, not being kind. Well, you are in a way. <laughs> <laughs> in the long yeah. run, you are being kind. Yes. Uh -huh. So these individual clumps, okay, whoops, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. We can pot them individually, or we can still put them together. To Which form we're going to put them together. Yeah, do it like that to form a bigger um, clump. I like the big, bigger, grander look. But I don't recommend putting different varieties in the same pot. Okay. okay. Why is that? Because they'll bloom different times. Okay. Uh -huh. And even the the shape of the the, the plants. Like oh, some are long, some are so short. So it might look, so look lopsided. Weird, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. pretty yeah pretty that's good. pretty good. Okay. So we put we have our hole. We have a, a pot with a hole in it, and we're gonna put some screen material in there to keep the bark in and the bugs out. Yes. Over so the this hole. Is pretty clean now. So there's a lot, kind of a lot to it, which uh -huh. is why I didn't do it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> don't cut the leaves. These are not irises. Okay. These are not daylilies. Okay. Do not cut the leaves, okay? And I would have been tempted to cut the yes. leaves. Uh, so leave it messy, okay? Okay. Orchids are actually, especially stamidiums, they're quite messy. Okay. It's a messy plant. Can we tie them up? Uh, I would just leave them. Just open. leave them. Just yeah. leave them. So for those of you who have OCD, <laughs> yeah, that's the way the plan is, okay? <laughs> Fight your tendencies to make them look clean and fresh. <laughs> yeah. That's good to know. I would have cut them. Mm -hmm. I would have cut them. Because they, um, each pseudo bulbs make, um, each pseudo bulb makes only a, a, a certain number of leaves. Okay. And once the, those leaves 
and they all come out at the same time. Oh, and all right. So they don't continue to make leaves. Oh, okay. Okay. So if you cut these leaves, there won't be new leaves come out here to replace to next... those leaves. Okay. Ever? No. Well, they'll it'll make side shoots. These baby oh, shoes will make the new so leaves. So it's a one-time shot on the bulbs. Uh, each ah. bulb only makes uh, half a dozen leaves. Okay, yeah. I didn't know that. Right, they don't, they don't continue to grow each one. Yeah. Like. So now these ones that you're cutting the tops off of, are yeah. they going to... These are will never ever sprout new leaves. Okay. But we still need them. Oh, because they'll come off the side. Right. Ah. We still need them because they're there to store nutrients. Okay, so okay. those are your nutrient storers. Yes. Carbohydrates and sugars, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Plants full of synthesize, make sugar. Okay. And sugar is stored usually in the roots. Okay. But in the case of or, uh, orchids, since they grow on trees and, okay. or even grow on rocks and things like that, okay. or in, in sort of kind of poor soils, they gotta have, they, they also use the pseudobulbs to store nutrients. Okay. Okay. That's Imagine the way to tree, survive, yeah. Some of these, like uh, Calais, they grow in trees. Right. And right. they need places to store nutrients. Okay. okay so they, they have pseudo bulbs. The bulbs, yeah. Too. Yeah, I recall seeing those. Yes. And the other one that I killed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in Southern California, anyway, mm -hmm. these will grow in the shade outside. Very good. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. These are wonderful, wonderful orchids for outdoor use. But it needs to be a bright shade. Yeah. Mine, yeah. the other one yes. that I have. They've been in slightly too much shade, so the leaves yes. are all long and bending over. Right. Uh -huh. Yep. Yeah. So morning sun before 10, afternoon sun after 4, will they take that? Uh, filter sun all day, ideal, ideally. Filtered sun all because, day, okay. Uh, when it's uh, 100 degrees, it'll, the plant will burn within a half an hour. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's use these two. Okay. Okay. And we can plant this big one somewhere else. Okay. So for the size of pot we have, yes, you're suggesting only two clumps for this size. Yeah. Okay. Give them some room to grow. Okay. Now, how long is it going to take for this plant to flower again? Because um, sometimes I've heard, you know, when you transplant orchids, especially um, big orchids. Uh, they enter a lot bigger pot. It takes uh -huh. them a while to regenerate before they want to flower again because right. they like to be crowded. So how long is it, these going to take next year? Uh, it's hard to say. I would say a couple years or a so. A couple years. Okay. Yes. So. Okay. Let me have the Osmocote. Okay. Osmocote. We're going to use Osmocote. That. I like Osmocote for almost everything. Okay. You can use it on indoor plants almost anything yeah, even the water outdoors, plants yeah i use it on my water lilies okay yes because the the little pellets they sink okay okay so sprinkle a little bit mix it in a little bit it doesn't burn right so in case you pour too much it's okay that's why we like osmico yes a little bit of bark right, so he's got his and bark make sure make sure the the pieces i really haven't cleaned this very well but it's close enough Okay. So don't do as we do, do as we say. <laughs> yeah. Try to make it as clean as possible, okay. Um, if you see insects or if you see debris, you can actually use a brush. Okay. Brush off the, the debris. Okay. okay. So it's almost like um, surgery. Yeah. I think that should be good. So now we're going to pack the bark yeah. around. Pack it really tight, okay? Orchids are very top heavy, so make sure they are firmly, firmly planted in the bark. Bark is very light. So until the roots start growing into the, the growing medium, make sure they're really firmly planted so they don't fall out. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, so now now that we've caught this in here, um, we're gonna soak it with water, right? Give yeah. It a good drink. Some people soak the bark first. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's already saturated. Yeah, this one is, has some moisture in it. Okay. In it. So, so you it's can. Not dry. Soak, yeah, so yeah. it's not bone dry. In case, let's say you have some orchid bark laying around for a long time, they're bone dry, they're really really dry. Just soak, soak the pieces first, okay? Overnight. Yeah, until it's thoroughly thoroughly. Wet, so it's wet. Yeah. okay. Uh -huh. All right, that's a good tip. Yeah. Then, okay, so then we're going to water it really well. Yeah. And then when would we water it again? 
some some people say you're supposed to leave them like this for a while uh -huh. if you soak your bark really well then you don't have the water because there's a lot of cuts a lot of wounds oh you want to let the wounds heal kind of like succulents where you let it heal over okay. yeah all right so, uh, so we're going to do an initial watering and then a yeah. month or uh um, no ish uh, uh, judged by the the, the, bark. the moisture of the bark okay. if the bark looks kind of dry it's time to water okay okay and you're gonna keep in the shade okay right uh -huh. okay and then okay so now if we were doing this when we were supposed to do that in the spring after they've done flowering you would do this in the spring mm -hmm. and then what kind of fertilizer would we use on it okay uh, besides the osmic coat that's just kind of your basic we're gonna throw that in there because it's a slow release it's going to give it fertilizer throughout the season but Jerry also likes to um, yes. give it a little boost yeah so, um, Osmoco is a foundation fertilizer to keep the plant a nice kickstart. Right. Plus, it's uh, you release nutrients into the soil consistently. Okay. okay. The soil medium. Okay. And then, but if you want your plants extra, extra plump, which we want, yes. yes. <laughs> then we want to. Um, Cymidiums use two kinds of fertilizer. They have the cymidiums are um, they're not tropical orchids, so they have a distinctive growing season, blooming season, and a resting season. So during the uh, growing season, which is spring and summer, mm -hmm. you use something that's high nitrogen, you high in the first number. This one, 30, 10, 10. Okay. You see that? Yeah, 30% nitrogen. Which, okay. yeah, the, the first which number will, is your greening. Yes, which will promote growth. And they growth. do a lot of growing um, right after flowering, okay? So when you cut off the flower stems, usually around March, April, maybe early May if you're lucky, and then uh, you're gonna see these young leaves coming out, like like this. Like that one. Um, they behave almost like bamboos. Oh yeah, that, they sprout in the spring. All yeah. the leaves come out at the same time. Okay. They don't grow um, like one leaf at a time. Okay. They grow like a, all the leaves come out at the same time. Okay. okay. So um, during the growing season, you notice a lot of shoots, like bamboo shoots, coming off from the outside of the pot. Like, like right around the, the rim. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You see new shoes coming out like that. Yeah. And that's when you start feeding your plant with the 30 10 10. Okay, so okay. as soon as you start seeing new growth coming up here, you want to promote more new growth. Mm -hmm. Okay, with that, the 30 okay. 10 10. The so growth. that would say uh, April, May, June, or at, uh, at the end of the blooming season, the few plants have flowered. Okay? okay. But then after September, October, Days are getting short. Okay. That triggers the pine to go into the um, the, the resting okay. mold. Okay. They go to rest when it's cold. Okay. Okay. Which makes sense. Yeah. Yes. They're hibernating. Yeah. They all plants, even evergreen plants, sleep. Right. Because the winter months, the days are too short. There's not enough uh, sun hours to photosynthesize, so they use that time to rest. Okay. At the same time, a lot of plants, including camellias, azaleas. Um, they they flower at the end of the uh, resting season. Okay. So you see flower appearing. You can start seeing flower stems as early as uh, like December, January. On the on the cymbidiums. On the cymbidiums. Okay. On the so then when cymbidiums. we switch to the bloom. Uh, okay. Starting around, I will usually. I, September is when kids will go back to school, right? Mm. I like to use that as my oh. reminder okay. to switch my fertilizer. Okay, from growth from this to blooming. Because yes. they're going to go to school and bloom. Uh huh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. But September, uh, September October ish, go ahead and use that. Okay. okay? And then uh, uh, this will promote the flowers. The flower will come out much bigger. Okay. Without, If you don't have this, don't use this. Don't use that. Okay. Do okay. not use that during the winter cooler months. Okay. okay. So Too don't use nitrogen. anything. Right. Right. Too much nitrogen uh, in the winter months will might harm the plant. Okay. Okay. So and that's when the osmocote would kind of take over and take care of that, yes, that yes. issue. So if you're not going to mm -hmm. uh, do one, uh, if you're not going to do the bloom, don't do anything. Just let the osmocote take over. Right. Now, when would we redo the osmocote? Uh, I would do it once a year. Once a year. Uh -huh. At the, the beginning of the year. Beginning of yeah, the January. Like, yeah, ish. Ish. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. Because it doesn't burn. Plus, you're only using a little bit, so you're not gonna harm the plant. Right. Um, Osmo code um, doesn't work when it's cold. 
So I would probably do it after March. Okay. okay. January in Southern California might be, but slightly cooler climates, I will do it slightly later. Okay. Okay. All right. So mm -hmm. the soil temps need to be up, and that's just like with any fertilizer. If the microorganisms are not awake and doing their thing, they're not doing anything with your fertilizers. So mm -hmm. um, they're the ones who break it up, make it available to the plants. So that's good advice. Yes. Okay. Thank so you. we have also another one over here. That another cymbidium. Oh, you mind. Okay. I got it. You want to do this one or do the other one? The other one. Okay. Let's get rid of this. Yeah. And try, while you're working with orchids, or almost any plants, try to keep your working station as clean as possible, okay? Um, after you can, after you finish, you make sure to hose it down with water. And then uh, before you start working on your orchids, you can even spritz the, the working surface with a bit of a like bleach. A bleach or very diluted um, like alcohol solution. Okay. Yeah, just to so it's, everything is disinfected. Okay. Especially with orchids since they're, they're relatively easy to catch um, virus. Okay. Yeah. And right. definitely keep in check, check your plants often, usually around the base for insects. The scales. Gotta keep them in check. Mealy the bugs. Scales, mealy bugs. In the springtime, you might get some aphids, some oh, young shoots. Yeah. Those insects uh, spread uh, virus. Okay. Okay. All right. And then uh, viruses do not kill plants. Okay. But they will make the flowers come out weird. Okay. Yeah. All right. The flowers come out distorted. Is, yeah. You know, misshaped. Right. You know. Especially with large flowering orchids like uh, Calea. Mm. When Calea gets virus, it's no good. It's not okay. pretty. All yeah, right. the plant, the petals won't be the same. It won't be as symmetrical. Oh. All right. So this one is. This one, as you can see, is hanging way over the pot. Yep. It was stretching for sun. Yeah. You see, you see a bit of a uh, roots. Yeah. Coming out. Yeah. 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 In the wild, of course, it's in the ground, so uh, plenty of places to spread. Here, they're confined in pots, so we have to get them back to the pots. <laughs> get them back in the pots. Now, I'd be tempted just to cut it off as a thing. Yeah, I want to save a few of good roots. Okay, he's... Uh, plants like um, the orchid, like um, Phileanopsis, moth orchids. Okay. Those are... Um, epiphytic orchids meaning they grow on trees okay. and actually there's a stem inside the, the plant that holds every, all pieces together leaves and roots okay but as the plant gets higher and higher the lower part of the stem dies right so which when is why you, they kind of crawl out of the pot yes yeah we're talking same about same thing with uh, African violets okay right yeah uh -huh. they make a stem yeah the trunk. Yep. so once in a while when the uh, when you're trying to repot them you, you look at the, you, you go inside the, the root mass and find that stem. If there's a lot of stem, you cut the piece off, cut the stem off. Okay, that shortens the length of the, the, the orchid. Yeah. So you can plant Put it, it deeper into in. the pot. Yeah. And you can usually see the other roots that are getting ready to come out. So mm -hmm. make sure you keep some of those other roots and you should be pretty well yeah. uh, in yeah, good really shape. We're being mean about it. Yeah, we're being mean again. Mm -hmm. Heating up this little yeah. orchid. You trans uh, repot normal in normal circumstances. Uh, you repot your cymidium orchids right after flowering. Right. Yeah, because if you do it now, you might break off some of the flower buds. Right, which we don't initiated. want to do. Yeah, but these this will look like it's got any in a desperate need of um, help. Yes, it needs help. So I'm, we're doing it now. I've been neglectful. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. It's not gonna kill the plant. You can do it anytime. It doesn't really make a difference. Just uh, avoid the hot summer, of course. Okay, so now when they're flowering... The flower does happen. Yeah, that's the old one. Because mm -hmm. it did flower. Yes, it did. Okay, when they're when they're done flowering, what do you do? Um, you, the stem, you cut the whole stem off. Whole stem, okay. Yeah, don't, don't leave the stem. Um, they're not like... Um, the, 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 the phalaenopsis, yeah, yeah, the phalaenopsis. The phalaenopsis, the uh, sometimes they fork out. You get new, more flowers on the same stem. Right, right. I like to cut the whole stem off. 
because I like the, the look of a one piece going straight Oh, up. the Phalaenopsis uh -huh, you the Phalaenopsis, Okay, yes. we're talking about Phalaenopsis. Those are the ones that usually you get as a gift. <laughs> Got yes. the big fat leaves and the pretty thing of spray of flowers. Right. Yeah. They're very common. Especially for Phalae, especially for young, younger plants. You want to grow them on, uh, a lot of people throw them out after the, right. the flower's done. But if you don't grow them on, I usually cut the stem off. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, I want the plant to grow first. Right. So, okay, so, we're, so the poor we're plant gonna, doesn't yeah. have to spend time uh, holding it, that, that stem up. And that's a hard one to do. Or making flowers. <laughs> yeah. I know, Spider. I know. Sometimes you have to sacrifice. Yeah. But it's like when you plant um, uh, marigolds. Right. Especially those big African marigolds. Right. You're supposed to break, take, take those flowers off. So that the plant will, that's kind of like with fruit trees too. Yeah. Yeah, you're not supposed to, once you plant them, you're not supposed to let them fruit. Yeah. And the flowers are pretty, but then uh, if you cut the cut that initial flower off on top, and the, the roots will come out faster. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, Phalaenopsis, um, mm -hmm. they tend to bloom once a year as well, correct? Phalaenopsis are a little, it's a tropical orchid, okay? These are from the uh, Himalayas. Okay. Parts of China, uh, Nepal, yeah. those places, okay. the Himalayan mountains. Okay. So the, they like the cold weather. Um, okay. Not freezing though. No. In cooler climates, you gotta put them inside the house. Okay. They will freeze. Yeah. But okay. um, uh, the moth orchids, Phalaenopsis, those are um, those are tropical orchids. Sub tro tropical to subtropical. Okay. They're native parts of uh, China, southern China, Taiwan, and the Philippines. And they need a little cool, don't they? They need. Bit of a chill. This is subtropical. Okay. So they require some chill. All right. To initiate the flowers, but the good thing is, um, especially on older plants, that stem will continue to generate flowers. The stem will continue to get longer, 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 longer. Right. Start Indefinitely. Right. Right. You can get like 10, 15 feet out of that. Thing. Right. Right. Especially on the older bush. Okay? Yeah. Older plant. In the um, well, it sort of kind of climbs a little bit. Imagine in the jungle, you know, they, they, they climb into branches and they make flowers huh? along the way. Yes. I've seen them like super long. Yeah, we were in Brazil. You saw them in the trees there. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, they, they need the humidity, right? To... They need some humidity. Yeah. Yeah. We've been pretty humid this year. <laughs> One thing about these tropical um, orchids, like the Phalaenopsis, you gotta give them the right growing condition. In, in Southern California, our winter is a bit too cold. Okay. Uh, except for people living near the coast. Right. Okay. Yeah, no, I put mine outside in the wintertime. I live in Rancho Santa Margarita. Mm -hmm. It didn't do well. Yeah, I did some, um, for a customer of mine, uh -huh. I did some Phalies outside on our porch uh, in Newport, Beach, Newport Coast. Okay. And they, lived, and they were fine. They were okay, fine so those of you are at the coast. Yeah, they're more lucky. You're lucky. In yeah. so many ways. Yes. <laughs> indeed, indeed. See, nice and clean. We can get rid of some of these roots. See, the, the way to tell, see, living roots have uh, this, this tip. Oh, sure, okay. Uh-huh, this okay. white tip. Okay. To tell um, with how healthy your roots are, okay? Okay. Not just on orchids, but all plants. Yeah. You look for these white roots. Okay. Okay, the roots are white. They are very healthy. If the roots are dark brown and water soaked yeah not not dead. so good mm -hmm. yeah so there's a lot on there yeah. that are not so good yeah, this one i can just take out the bad ones yeah so there is hope there's so pretty oh yeah. there's always hope if it's green is there's hope <laughs> yeah <laughs> indeed indeed all right so i see you've gotten these down to there about three or four of the little pseudo bulbs mm -hmm. very good yeah this one's Okay, and we're leaving that one because it's got nutrient. Yeah, it's still, still plump. Okay. It's still hard. Yeah, still if firm. they're soft, get rid of them. If they're nice and, like a potato, if they're nice and firm, then... Mm -hmm. oh, let's use this one. Yep. If they're nice and firm, then you're good. Good to go. Now we're kind of breaking the rules because we didn't clean this up there is area up so don't do like i said don't do as we uh -huh. do do as we say today we're using this uh clay pot a nice and heavy but you can use uh, plastic pots it's okay uh okay. they're plastic but if you're like me and they're lucky they get any kind of care at all yeah <laughs> <laughs> in, in a... you, you may want to use a plastic one 
Because it'll hold a little more moisture longer. <laughs> yes, yes. But um, this is has a rough surface. Orchids have a tendency, their roots have a tendency to grab hold of the, the surface. Oh, okay. So let's say if you let it become super Large. root bound, you yeah. might have trouble pulling it. Pulling it out, okay. Uh -huh. Use a knife or a saw or something, scrape the roots around. Okay. Uh huh. All right, to, to loosen it from yeah, the... Yeah, so look at okay. it out. That's, okay, that's good advice. Mm -hmm. Boy, we're getting all kinds of great tips here. <laughs> I see Anu, he's, he's a guru. That's, right. well, that's I like why orchids. I, I grow myself. Uh, don't bury them too deep, okay? Okay. Burying them the way they were, which is right around right here. Right there, okay. Okay, where the leaf roots and the leaf joint. Okay. Right around here, right. not much deeper. If somehow the, I mean, like this one has no roots left. Right. If the plants have trouble standing up, I'm gonna have to stake them. Yeah, I gotta yeah. stake them. Okay. So all really good tips. Mm -hmm. Here, hold, hold me, please. Keep them slightly apart. So it does help to have somebody ha helping you. <laughs> helping hands. Final stretch here. Bark sometimes sharp too. It's got splinters, so you know I would definitely recommend gloves. wearing gloves. So poor Jerry's going to be pulling s stuff out of his hands now for the next hour. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you for your sacrifice. <laughs> oh no problem, no problem. That we could learn. Straight. So we get to learn from our mistakes. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's done. Perfect. Okay. You can use uh, like a handle of a screwdriver or something. I mean, to just really push it in. Push it in. Mm -hmm. You want to firm it down. Tight so as we'll, possible. I'll do a little more work on this before we, we uh, take it home. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Yes. All right. Here. So there we go. So there you have it in a nutshell. How to take oh, care of your Cymbidium orchids. And if you have any questions or, or you have any comments, please click the like button and make comments. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe so you know and the bell so that you know when we get new new videos. And thank you, Jerry, thank for you. being here with us today. And mm -hmm. thanks for watching. Have a great day. Thank you.